Did Power Rangers once and always need JDF to be a success? Next up on Just to Talk So, let's talk about it. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the Flicks, Picks, and the Nit Picks. And I am your host, Note 718. And we're going to get right into it, man. Um, I'm going to do a lot of Power Ranger talk on this one because I think it opens up the conversation for fandom, um, expectation, childhood. And it kind of talks to a larger conversation about the responsibility of us as YouTubers and even just as fans online, depending on how we come at it. Because if we're, because co- I think that you should have every right to do whatever you want to do online. Be dickheads and all of that. I ain't, I ain't mad at it, but you get what you what you entertain and you get what you put out there. That being said, does it really work for the fandom? I don't think it does. It doesn't create a healthy fandom. It, t- it creates more antagonist idologues and and hate watch channels. That's just me. But uh, I also understand what it is to have a favorite character that you are attached to immensely i think how we handle it as adults is kind of childlike and ridiculous because it's adults online having conniption fits but got full-on kids that they'll tell hey man don't be bullying people at school but you'll go online and bully people online and say well i could do that but then if someone bullies your kid online hey hey they're bullying my kid online but then they'll say, well, hey, I'm talking about James Gunn or I'm talking about, um, um, what's her name, um, Brie Larson. Because they're bigger, it shouldn't matter because they make more money. And it's like if you're coming at, coming at it that way, then you're drastically and sadly misunderstood, mistaken. Now, let's get to it. Once and always, it's probably the biggest Power Rangers has ever been since its inception. That's just what it is. And I told you guys eventually I'm gonna start inserting certain um I might start insert certain comments. Not trying to come at the comments as I'm gonna see how I wanna do that, but I'm gonna address certain conversations that I've actually had and presented to you online so you can get to see what I'm seeing, so you can see why I bring this I, I find it so interesting and why I'm I'm gonna talk a lot more about this. Because I think it kind of like dips into a lot of avenues that for those that don't understand, especially certain demographics of fans, why they feel the way they feel on certain levels. And you'll see the benchmarks of where why politics was introduced into fandom, but then it went awry. And now we're, we've completely lost sight of what we want to talk about and what the conversation needs and the conversations that need to be had around it. Um, once and always, without dispute, has been the most mainstream people have been gathering and wanting to discuss Power Rangers and coming back to it. I mean, bar none. I mean, it is there. I'm almost certain that the ratings that Netflix is getting is better than any special that JDF ever was in. A matter of fact, not even JDF, any of the specials, because I don't think it's a JDF thing. I think Once and Always was the biggest special ever. Forget all your forever reds, all of that. Those were big specials for the fandom, but this was big because one, it was on Netflix. But not so much because it was on Netflix, because mainstream TV, you you, you may make the argue, used to get better ratings. Um, but like I said, depending on time and stuff like that, so you have to be careful about how you present that argument. But in terms, but we could at least gauge it by tweets. And I think this has been the most tweeted about series. And this could also be because it's the first time I've really immersed myself in the fandom not you know what i mean where people talk about it because i wasn't aware that it was it had such a fandom until like when they're watching videos like yo they brought back the they they be showing up at the cons like it was like maybe like about 10 years ago when i first saw the first video of all the rangers together at cons and i was like oh shit i didn't know they do this and then i just slowly but surely started finding channels and then when hasbro came back this is perfect time for power rangers to represent themselves to the masses 
And we're going to have a lot of topics on Just to Talk. And again, those will go, a lot of those Just to Talk episodes, I will send over to my um, Ranger channel on here playlist. I, I, I got to. I, I got it going by one thing in particular there. You, you you can't miss it, but I don't know if I'll change it. It, it to a better day. But for right now, the working name is like Ranger Nation because uh, I thought that was a hashtag everybody used. And if it isn't, I think I heard, first heard it from a young lady on YouTube named uh, Ranger Liz. And, and go subscribe to her if you're a big Power Ranger person. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I follow a lot of fandoms. As you know, Snyderverse, um, Recast the Chala, it, it kind of went down because the movie um, already came out. But we could still hope and wish and kind of push for for that. But then the Power Rangers, you know, and then I'll probably do, when X-Men 97 come out, don't be surprised. I'm going to be on that. You know what I'm saying? Especially when X-Men the movies come out. So stay tuned for all of that. But... The question I ask is, because a lot of people are wondering, oh, it would have been better if JDF was there. And I don't really think so. Well, I yes and no. I don't think that the 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 the, the um ratings would have changed much. Don't get me wrong, he is the most pow popular Power Ranger. But him being there, I don't think would have moved the needle that much more. Don't get me wrong, I think it would have moved it up a little, but I don't think it's as up as people really expect. Only people that are immersed in Power Rangers know who the fuck JDF is. Like, I just had a conversation with someone online that really believes that uh, Legend of the White Dragon got a big buzz. Y'all don't even know he did another movie as um, Bloodshot in the Valiant universe. That didn't blow up. Like, uh, no matter what we believe, JDF was not as big a star as you believe. None of the Rangers are. Like, like that's not even like a shot or a dig. They know that. We know them more for Power Rangers. And I could at least point to two out of Mighty Morphin that have done other work that you guys are not even aware of. One of which had did, came back to do voices. But I'll say three were actually, no, maybe four were actually in the business. One was focused mostly on um, voiceovers and, and, and anime stuff. But another one was behind the scenes, I think did more production and stuff. And one did more directing, production, sang, and acted. And another one danced and did dancing competitions, did acting, actually was in two you could argue franchises i don't know if you call it franchises but it was power rangers and had another show that i didn't even know people had a fandom for you know what i'm saying so these are actors that are known outside of of, of it for other things than just power rangers but to be fair they will even tell you the biggest thing they're notarized for is power rangers but they are working working actors directors and performers and producers and, and 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 voice actors you know what i'm saying jdf did none of that i think even the value universe thing went straight to youtube the, that that episode was it huge was it big did more people come knowing that jdf was in it I was surprised. I think the main reason why I watched it was because JDF was in it. I ain't even going to lie. But I don't think, but because of not a lot of people, unless you're Power Rangers, that would bring Power Ranger, Power Ranger, Power Ranger fans over to watch it. It's not going to bring the general audience because the general audience doesn't know who he is. He is not as big a superstar as we believe. Power Rangers is isn't as big as it once was when it initially launched but it's big enough that it could continue to self-sustain in itself at a constant which is is nothing wrong with there's plenty of things out there that do well in its own area but it is not immensely huge i think savage dragon the comic book it's not the biggest book in the world, but I believe it's still running by the same guy and the same design 
for all these years because it is consistent and it has its natural fan base that it can sustain itself on. That's all. And it does good for what it's presenting to its audience that follows. Like Nas. Nas for a lot of years, even though he, he battled the biggest and at one time was one of the biggest artists, even when no one was really paying attention to him. He was still making bread because he had a solid fan base. When you have a solid fan base, you can go on forever. While everybody is overblowing and making so much more than you, some people just failing underneath you, you ride a certain level of constant that's guaranteed because you are placating to your audience and your audience is big enough to fund what you're doing and you're producing at a level that is direct directly laser for focus to your audience jdf wasn't that big as we believe would have been a bigger series yes now yes but not that's not significantly it would have probably went up like maybe a percent or two and that's still good not enough and i'll be honest with you everybody bar from a few that said they weren't gonna watch it because jdf wasn't in it I put money on it. They watched it. And if they didn't watch it yet, they will watch it. You know why? Because if you're a real Power Ranger fan, you watch it. Like I told someone else before, most people came to watch Power Rangers. Some of y'all, I just now realized, came to watch Tommy and the rest. <laughs> or Tommy and the Rangers. That's the show y'all watched. I watched Power Rangers, even though my favorite Ranger was my favorite Ranger. I still came to watch Power Rangers. It's just that when my favorite left and left with a couple others, if and to throw new people in, it lost what it was because we started with a certain five. And let's be fair, JDF wasn't the five. JDF shined best juxtaposed against the, the five because that's how he came in. Then he, he, he shined because he wasn't the leader, but he was special. He had the green shield. He used to be a bad guy. He had so much. He was like the Wolverine. He was not Cyclops. I say again, he was not Cyclops. He was not the real golden boy leader. That was Jason. It just is what it is. You know, I keep telling people, man. There's a reason why they focus on JDF so much one he looked special coming in as evil green ranger kids wanted him back i get all of that but when the other three rangers left they had to lean on them because who else would have which could you have sent to that these were new characters that that weren't cut right you know against anything they didn't come from the very beginning they were just new characters that people had to get used to while you got rid of like three other characters that knew how to fight all of that. So when you bring in these new characters, don't get me wrong, Rocky could fight. Adam could really scrap. You know what I'm saying? But who you have left from the OGs? Kimberly could it could have front line it. She wasn't known as a fighter. She was a gymnast, but not a fighter. Um same thing with Billy, gymnast, not much of a fighter. Yeah, they learned a, a, along the way so they could do enough, but you could tell the difference between a Jason that could fight and a Zach that could fight. You could sell, tell the difference between why you think Zach was able to spar with um, JDF. They didn't do a lot of it because the idea was it was only green and red to juxtapose against each other. But you remember the scene where um, Jace, Zach was sparring with him? Zach been able to keep up with them. It was not no thing. You know what I'm saying? It was not no thing. He was just as acrobatic, just as athletic, and knew how to fight. He trained in martial arts as well. Maybe not to the extent that JDF and, and Jason did, but he had it. You could clearly see it. And, and, and that's the thing. They, they were cut already. Who? So when you remove all of them, you only have Billy... Kimberly and arguably your most popular one you gonna send to every story is gonna be around Tommy and it's gonna be Tommy and the Rangers especially after Kimberly left it really was it took a long time before all the other Rangers be kind of became their own and it was more so when 
their transition state when they just said F it, we're just gonna bring in the Ninja Rangers. They gave a good reason why, and I love the Ninja, or not Ninja Rangers, the Alien Rangers. I did love that little couple of episodes, few episodes that they did. I think it was about like 10 or so. Then they transitioned into Zeo, and that's when Adam, Aisha, Rocky really owned it because they didn't replace anybody. They were their own characters with their own stories, new villains that they had to build those relationships from the ground up with the villains like that the antagonism the beef and all of that and that's where zeo was able to, to to be its own thing not be trying to be what mighty morphus started out in because i don't care what anyone says jdf or not the earlier episodes with the original was better than anything that um that it looked better was just better stories just better than anything that happened in mighty morphin after they had left let's just be for real let's just be for real the stories was just better more interesting you know don't get me wrong and and and, and a lot of that is because we're all attached to those because they started it off and that's just the point now when they started off zeo zeo boom that's them and they own that and then it felt like you had more balanced stories all the other characters they didn't have to feel like they're replacing somebody else. They could be their own and interact and have their own dynamics with each other and other people that they're around without ever having to feel like they are replacing red, black, and yellow. So again, to we wind this all the way back around to ask the question again. Now, if once and always would have had JDF, would have been a better series yes because we would have had another person in there that was around the og cast because he he he, he came later on but he can't became the sixth one boom another og ranger why not we would have loved it would it would have made it any more viral no because why would it jdf was in every special it would have never made it any special Every special where they brought Mighty Morphin, they only focused on him. It wasn't that important. No one would have, it wouldn't, the, the moving of the needle was, one, what once and always, addressing Trini, us losing Trini. And two, we haven't seen Walter since he left with Trini. And we haven't seen Billy since he left in Zio. And that was the big thing, like two ranges we haven't seen that left. And then we're going to see them with the replacement together for the first time. That was the next thing. JDF being there would have been great for those that were JDF fans. He always show up. It was just more surprise that he wasn't there. But I'll be honest with you now, would the story have been the same? I don't think so. I would have liked them to be part of this uh, surrounding Trini. But then, you know what would have happened? Tom, it would have had to been, Tommy would have had to been the, the, the guy to do everything. And it's like, why? You already created that out of them. Let the other Rangers that were here, even before him, get theirs off. I'm glad Zach got a chance to do the final blow. Why can't we allow these characters do that? This was, if JDF would have been there, let's be for real. Those little cool moments with Rocky would have been overshadowed. They probably would not have even given him that. In this one where they frontline Zach and Billy, they even found time to make Rocky interested. He was funny. He even had the most charisma he's ever had that I've ever seen, even, even when he was in the series to begin with. He was just a cool dude. Then the fighting, then then, then when he did the, the stab thing with, with, on, on one of the putties, we never seen him like look so badass before. Like Rocky got his flowers. And all y'all care about is just, don't get me wrong, rest in peace, JDF. I'm not talking about his passing, so let's not do that. I don't want to twist the words. But y'all would have been so focused on the Tommy character that you, we, Rocky would have never even got an opportunity to do that. Because everybody would have wanted to center it around Tommy and it would have been just another, another special that we seen with Tommy. You know what I'm saying? And it would have just been like, 
yo, like, you know, other rangers could fight too, bro. Like, you got like mad episodes and specials surrounded around him. This was the first time when they frontline Zach and Billy that even the others around them were able to shine. When JDF gets on, no one's he's no one around him is allowed to shine. Because the writers won't even let him. We see that in the Boom series book. Everything is motivating is motivating Boom is is, is JDF. Um, let me stop saying JDF. Tommy Oliver. And then and, and then trying to level up Jason to Tommy Oliver. That's it. And then the rest of the characters around them. And don't get me wrong, Kimberly gets love, Billy gets love in a book, and Trini definitely gets love. And I'm happy for that. And all these other rangers don't get any kind of shine. They're just background noise. Like, 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 nah, like it's Power Rangers, man. Like, try to build up all the characters, man. In the original um series with the OGs, everybody at least gets an episode or so, something centered around them. And it it, it just seems like, and it felt more authentic that way. It seemed like even though they did it after the other Rangers left, it didn't feel the same because they constantly had to lean on Tommy. Constantly. Constantly. And then if you do it so constant, he only has the same working trope all the time. He always gets a new helmet. That gets played out after a while. It's not impressive, let's say that. It's dope, but it's not impressive. Don't get me wrong. It's dope to collect new new, new uniforms, new suits, new powers. But it's not that impressive no more because it's like you did it mad times. He loses and gains. Loses and gains powers. Done it a couple of times, man. What more you could do with him? Um, that doesn't mean that he can't be the leader if you if that's what he is. But you can center and shine out other characters that surround him, and that's what I'm saying. It we would not have gotten that had JDF been a part of this series, because then Tommy Oliver's character would have been played up so much more that we might have lost sight that this was supposed to center Tr Trini. We might it, it might not have been, and if it, from what I understand. The, the story he wanted to tell would not have sent the Trini. <laughs> it would not have. It would have sent it, been around him trying to gain his powers back. And it's like, that's a big yawn. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd have watched it, but it would have been like, it wouldn't have been as exciting because we, we would have known he would have got his powers back. It would have probably been some word salad to explain it. And then... It, It'd have been like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Like, and we would have enjoyed it, loved it, all of that. This, yes, 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 don't get me wrong, I love all of that. But it would not have been interesting. It wouldn't have been exciting. It wouldn't have been like, dang, man, I wonder what they're going to do. It's no wonder. He's going to deliver the final bow. He's going to do something you've never seen before. He'll probably break out the, the Master Morpher. And we would have just been talking about Tommy all the way through. And it's just like, I get bored with that. I'd rather talk about, I'd get more excited talking about what time he did when I see what others are doing. Because it at least makes it feel like it's, it feels more balanced because it just seems like, 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 I know these other guys could fight. I know these other guys were dope characters. We could have played up their story. We could have, it would have been more focused on what's been going on with Tommy all the time. And it's like, dang, man, we got like Zach and Billy and haven't seen them in years. And we're still talking about Tommy. I think we, we need to talk about what's going on with them. If I was JD, if I'd have said, nah, you need to write them up more. Why well, I got so much lines. I'm always in every special. Most of them show up in helmets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like they got to, like, what happened to them? Don't the fans want to know what happened to them? Like we always know what happens to you, Tommy. You 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 always show up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. And like maybe that's what he means. But the fans, the fans of Green Ranger, that's what that's what they want. They want to know more Tommy, more level up, more Master Morphus, more. But then you got side channels where you do that already. You do that already. You got Battle in the Sun. You you yo, yo like again. It, it would have. I'm sorry to say. I think it would not have been impressive and it would not have moved the needle because it would have just been centered around Tommy. 
And, and I'll be honest with you. As older Rangers, seeing Zach standing in the front calling the morph is interesting because it lets you know that things have happened over the years. That Zach could just, even though like they were taken out of it, that's why Zach stepped up. But it adds more to why was Zach, well, one, he was second in command at one point. Maybe in these years he could have been a Ranger. That's why he had no problem stepping up. It was light. Billy, we've always known Billy to be a brain, but he's been in space. We could tell that things have happened. Look at look at um Adam and Aisha. They're in space with their own like academy. Things have happened. You know what I'm saying? And we could talk about all these things instead of just I find it interesting looking online, watching everyone talk about all the little things they talking about as, as opposed to just talking about Tommy all the time. Even when Tommy showed up at the um the, the, the 25th anniversary one that they did, I think it was like the legendary battle. It, it, it was uneventful because one, I think the story was kind of weak and all you get is JDF. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think TJ showed up a couple of them, but people wanted to see the Mighty Morphin people take the helmets. It was just weak. It's weak. There's Rangers out there that we haven't seen in mad years, and that's what made Once and Only so spe always so special, if you ask me. We haven't seen this and, and seen OG cast members standing next to cast members we've never seen them do stand next to in series as Power Rangers was the thing that made it so much better. It would have been great had JDF been involved and I don't know why he wouldn't have. People want to make it all about he, his, his script was stolen for Draken. That's a big reach because the Draken shit like nah like i think those are big reaches don't get me wrong i know he has a partner that says that he was mad about it and all of that and and to be fair i i wasn't there i was not there you know what i mean and i'll listen to it we'll talk a little bit more with respect to jdf may he rest in peace but i i just feel like we don't need to to mourn jdf we don't need to shade everything else that was done it's like like we don't know how to mourn or rep for someone without it being juxtaposed to everything else. And that's the thing that I don't like. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think that the show would have been better had really been better? And when I say the show, I don't mean would have been better to see JDF with everyone. We know that would have been amazing because I would have loved to see everyone together as much. And, and it would have only completed itself if Kimberly was there. But... Do you really think that if they would have showed up, would the writing have been different? Would Billy have been Billy and Zach have been sidelined? Would we have barely even would have been even less lines to, to or would they even have brought back Adam and Aisha? Or would this have been the story would have been just about JDF getting his powers back? No mention of Trin. Because that's what I heard his story was, and there was no mention of Trin. It was all about him getting his powers back. Though he had other powers. Again, did you really want to see that? Leave it in the comments below. You already know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. See you next time. And as always, till I have a bit outro, chill.